Olá, sejam bem-vindos à Hora do Desporto, à conversa com eu tenho ao meu lado, Azanin, antigo guarda-redes do Sporting e atual guarda-redes da CSM Bucareste e atual guarda-redes da seleção da Croácia de handball e vou passar a falar inglês. Hello Azanin, thank you to have you here and welcome to Hora do Desporto. Thank you for having me. Ah, uh, thank you one more time. If you know André, because the André tell you and, and I tell them and I tell him, okay, I will talk with uh, Matt. <laughs> right, yeah, no? <laughs> they, told me, they told me we are still, we are still, we see, uh, they still have a great connections and uh, yes, he told me that you want to make an interview and uh, I gladly accept it because André friend, it's trustworthy and so we can do it, no problem. Well, Azanin, tell so Tell me about you. Who is Matt Hazanin? The people need to know who is the person uh, before we talk about your career. Well, I think I'm the simple man, family man. Uh, I like to live a normal uh, life without too much uh, light uh, on me about uh, everything, I think. And uh, I love to be just not hidden, but just to have a calm life, you know, that nobody knows about my private thing so it's better for me that way and i like it that way i think simple is the best to describe yeah for example you start played in croatia right yes that's and uh, tell me the name of the club because i th i see is rk split right the i was uh, the in the junior team of uh, rk zagreb ah and, uh, okay Yes, and my first professional, uh, between this uh, transition between uh, junior and uh, senior team, uh, they sent, uh, I was still under the contract of Zagreb, but they sent to me a way to be playing the first league of Croatia to gain experience. So they had me under the Erka split, but I was all the time player of Erka Zagreb at that time. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I see. The next year you were Erka Zagreb and uh, Varazdin... <laughs> Yes, also one other, uh, more closer to Zagreb, more closer to Zagreb, they want to uh, have me more on the eye to go watch me on the live games. And uh, they sent me to the Varazdin. It's also first uh, first league team and I was there at that moment. Yeah, uh, okay, I have some problem here in my microphone, sorry for something. <laughs> um, do you hear me well? Yeah? Yes, I hear okay, you Okay, well. okay, okay, sorry, because here's some problems. Okay, now... You you have a long a long career. You passed in Germany, in Spain, in Portugal, again in Croatia, now in Romania, right? Yes. Now you are at this moment. You are the goalkeeper of the national team of Croatia. Uh no, the my last last uh, national team experience was 2020, four years ago. Okay, okay, 2020. Okay. <laughs> Yes, we win the medal there uh, at Euro Champion. We were the vice champions of Europe, and uh, and at that moment, at that moment, uh, we separated from national team. Um, they found two new amazing uh, goalkeepers to invest in the future, and uh, for the national team, it was the best decision because uh, now they have two brilliant young goalkeepers. Okay, now you at this moment you focus in the club. No, no, no more. My my focus now it's uh, on the club. <laughs> ah, for the people watch us, you played in Bucure in CSM Bucharest, right? Yes. And in the past, our manager, national manager, uh, Paul Jorge Pereira, was trained the the CSM Bucharest with Nuno Farel. <laughs> yes, Do you know. It's true. Yes, I heard. I heard the stories. I heard that uh, Paulo was there here, and they have uh, they're speaking uh, really good about him. That he really made a good impression on them in a short time when he was here, and that it was really good. But just may have some good history with uh, good players there and uh, good stars. And now Romanian league it's uh, like evolving with uh, Xavi Pascual, how he comes from Barcelona to Romania. It's getting more noticed that it's uh, they are investing more financially also to the league and everything, other clubs rising, and it's getting more competitive now. Well, now, before we talk at the few at the this at present, go back again and tell and, uh, and let's talk about your passage for Spain 
in Ademar Leon, right? Yes. You go out Croatia, you go out your mother country to other country, different country, right? Right. Yes. Different yes. league because uh, Spanish league is a good league. It's a very competitive competitive league, and you stay in the first uh, league in this year, two thousand and twelve and third, right? Yes. You yes. stay in the first league. Yes, uh, we. I was, uh, but that time was coach Manolo Cadenas. My first year and my second year was uh, Daniel Gordorios and. Uh, both good experiences the way I get learned. Uh, they put me, I was 18 years old. Uh, we were playing Champions League at that time. Uh, and uh, I was with 18 years old, getting a lot of opportunities. It was a time where the Spain also, Ademar Leon together was in a financial crisis where everything was going really down really fast. And uh, a lot of great players are, were leaving the league really fast. And it was, I was in these years between the still good and bad and like until they are more or less going down more productive what, because what Spain was before and what is now, it's not the same level. Yeah, exactly. Not yeah. the same level. Not the same level, but there are, there are still good players there, everything good. But in my that time, it was really there. So there was still Ivano Balic playing for Atletico Madrid, uh, Lazarov. Uh, you know, you have Valladolid with amazing players. Rafael Capote, where he was in uh, La Rioja. You know, antique legend players still playing there. And until this, and this first two years was really my professional outside Croatia career was really something to remember. It's very important for you because it's the first club you played outside the, um, the Croatia. Yes, it's true. It's true. Uh, and after two years, I had a uh, opportunity to renew my contract uh, three years more. Three years more, but I didn't accept it because I got an opportunity to go to play the strongest league in the world. It was Bundesliga at that time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, exactly. And I accepted this, of course. You played in Be uh, Bellingham. Well, oh, I don't, yes. Bellingham, yes. Uh, right? Not not Jude Bellingham. <laughs> Jude Bellingham, it's a player. <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, Bellingham, right? Say uh, this. This is the German name. I don't know to to talk German. This morning, when I when I try to learn something in German because I need to to talk good the names of the club, I try to 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 search in try to, to and translate, and mm, this is not for me. Sure, this is not for me. Easiest, easiest way, just say Balingen. Balingen. Balingen, yes. Balingen, okay. Balingen. Yes. <laughs> you stayed two years in Balingen, right? In Bundesliga. Yes. And the what is the team. feeling to play? In football, of course, we have Premier League. And in handball, we have the Bundesliga. What is the feeling played in the more, in the strongest, the stronger uh, league in the world? Uh, it was... One more. It was amazing. Really, Playing teams you don't, like Magdeburg. <laughs> you don't have a game where you can say, "Oh, it will be easy game." You can relax. Uh, you, you know, it was every game on the night. Uh, every game uh, you're playing until the end. You can win everywhere. You can lose everywhere, and uh, against everybody. Fuchs Berlin or Magdeburg, they were not sure when we were coming to the, their house and we were winning there uh, all, all game. Uh, at home, we win against Flensburg, against Kiel, against Reinecker. Uh, you know, it's we were we had really good, good, good team at that time. Uh, a lot of German national player. It was uh, Olivier Niokas uh, also there from the French national team. Uh, we had uh, on from the Serbian national team, uh, uh, later Montenegro national team, Ristanovic, uh, uh, with me together. We had, we managed to have a good team. And we finished my first year, uh, we would think we were 10th or 9th in, uh, in, uh, in the league. And it was amazing experience then. Well, and next, you come Portugal. So, you Croatia, Spain, German, Portugal. <laughs> I, I like war, warmer weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you were played in sporting uh, with our friend in common, Andre. They in the in the in the the moment they had your coach. They are your coach. 
a go, go, go Chukov goalkeeper because you hire a, goal, a goalkeeper. Um, and what is the best moment? So you you went to, you you went to Portugal and you. Okay, this is not this is very different of Bundesliga. This is very different of Spain. It's it's a completely different uh, league. In that this uh, here uh, this year now uh, the years past years so 16, 17, So it's a very very difficult team that uh, the league at this moment this moment they are very very competitive teams now. But in the past this year you played in the uh, Sporting. It's very different league. The same. You talk about Spanish league at in the past and now it's the same. Uh, okay, so we, you go outside of the most important league of handball, go to Portugal, and what is your first difficulty when you come here? Okay, it's very different of the three, five, four cl last club I stayed because it's a different reality. Yes, you can say of the competitive maybe of the league and everything but uh you know it was not easy because it's what uh sporting represent what the sporting uh stood by you know in the first day when you come and you come and you see how people live for this club everything are surrounded by it you know you start immediately feel like kind of pressure in you that you need to live and stood and play by the, this level so it doesn't matter the league doesn't matter especially in this time the Porto was like we are the main champions there you know we are we are them you know yeah, it, yeah. Like, it doesn't matter doesn't matter which team you put together at that time sporting we will take your championship and it was really really amazing league this is my first year i'm talking uh it was really we have our upside down there was the europe challenge cup we were managing this good but our main goal was league we won a league because it was okay at that time the last time when we when we win it was uh, before the like 16 years i don't know something like it was the last national league title and we were really from the first day hey we need we won it, you know, we won it uh, and uh, it was uh, for us the main goal and for me it was the most beautiful three years in my life. I mean, it was, uh, I really enjoyed so much being there, being the part of this club, of this life, of uh, everything, the joy of Lisbon, the, the welcome I have from the fans until now, until days they are writing me, supporting me, they say they are missing me, it's I can only thank them if they will watch. They know that they have my internal thanks to this. And uh, it's like I said before, when the time when I was living out, the sporting will be and all the club I remain that I can play in Portugal. When If I come back to the Portugal, it will be for sporting, no more. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so you tell this is the three most beautiful years in your career at now? For sure. For sure, okay. for sure. You you won the two national titles, uh, one Challenge Cup, right? Yes. Yeah. When you win, the uh, in Sporting is your first title of uh, your career, so a champion title. Uh... I win. I win it as a as a junior senior team for the Zagreb first, uh, but it was. This was my biggest major role that I was uh, there also with a team more not as a more sideline but if i was included in this but it was special okay so when when you won this what is the feeling in the final of the game okay we are champions of portugal oh it was what do you really... feel in this moment in that because That's you you remember help me uh two years consecutive with win the league the national league right yeah it's true it's true we, okay we, we uh, in the middle you won the Challenge Cup? Yes. Okay, so what is the feeling you won to, to consecutive uh, title, nas national title? It's It was amazing because they, you feel the like uh, power of your own team, you know, and especially when wherever you come, you feel like you, you're going, you are being hunted, you know. Everybody wants to take you down, and that means that you are the best. We were the best at the time. We won the 
uh, there's uh, two titles, three titles with the uh, European Cup, and uh, for me it was it was amazing. I liked I like was it was playing that there was my there was my also I was always close somewhere to to win the for the best goalkeeper, but in uh, in Sporting was my first time that I received for the best goalkeeper of the league. And also for me, at same at personal level, you know, there was a great Quintana who passed away, who who was the for me one of the most one of the best goalkeepers in Europe. And uh, know that um, Hugo Bert, who, who is still playing, uh, and it's like the competition with the Portuguese legends there for private level. It was also like uh, extra motive for me. But in a in a in a team way, I think we have really really good uh, energy together, and we manage. We were, you know, we lost uh, like two times. Even in Porto, Porto at home, we were winning by seven, and then we lose by one at the uh, last minute, and then uh, you know these uh, problems, stress, everything. Hey, we need to manage, come out back again from this, and. Uh, let's say and how we did it you know step by step uh, building uh, us as a team it was perfect for us well in the final of the year champions <laughs> yes as i mean you after you go you stay three years here in portugal what you learn of course you learn portuguese Ah, eu posso falar, mas não não sou seguro. Não sou seguro para falar. Então, uh, você... you, will, you will understand me. I'm more secure to, to not make some mistake, you know, that everybody will make a meme, meme of me. Let's play a game before we continue the your about your career. Before uh, let's make a little game, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's see. Let's go. Repeat, uh, repeat not. Uh, answer my question, okay? I will talk in Portuguese. Okay. Okay. Quero o jogador com quem mais brincavas no plantel do Sporting? Oh, fui, fui o Pedro Portela, o seguro. Pedro Portela okay. e Pedro Sonha. Até o momento que eu, eu está retirado. Okay, 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 okay. Pregaste alguma partida ao André Teixeira nesses anos? <laughs> Now you will repeat your English because I <laughs> You uh, okay? Now I talk in English, but it's more easy. <laughs> you played something good, but bad to André Teixeira to make a joke with them with he. Uh, this one I will leave it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this one, I cannot. I will not share with nobody. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's continue the interview because this is very problematic. Let's continue. <laughs> Azanin, before you stay here three years uh, and you say this is the three best years in your career at this moment, you go back again for the Bundesliga, right? Yes, it was this time when, um, which I completely understand. It, I was in, the, I come back to Sporting when uh, I was coming back from my injury. And uh, at that time, it was this, uh, uh, when Skok was there and Alyosha Chudic also, and they were having amazing season. And I was coming back again and, you know, the, It was not possible that you have a three foreigners uh, with a bigger contract and uh, also one young uh, Manuel Gaspar who is now playing in France uh, to have four goalkeepers so, at the position. And uh, it was, uh, they will need to have a decide and it was logical decide because even Skok and uh, Chudic was uh, having amazing season and they decided to, to break the things with me and it's uh, it was it was okay understandable because they they didn't have a uh, money at that time for keeping all three of goalkeepers strange, strange goalkeepers so we made an agreement of course there was no harsh moment nothing about it 
everything was uh, like sport, sport, uh, like sport, logical. This is part of life. This is part of the player life, and you go. Of course, I was really sorry and sad because I really like it here. I like the people. I like the fans and everything. But you know, this is something you need to live with. We are, we are uh, as this. I will be eternally grateful for Sporting for giving me the chance for playing for them. And uh, after that, it was this moment where, okay, now I, it's a January. I am uh, without the club and uh, Zagreb calling me back for to playing Champions League for them. But from the next season, okay, I have a club for next season, but I will need to stay in a club for the next uh, somewhere six months. And then Ludwig Safen called me uh, to come there, there to try to help them to they don't go down to the second league. Okay, to permanence the first Bundesliga, right? Yes. And you have, you now, at this moment, to go back to 2029, 2019, 2019, you say, okay, you go outside in January to Sporting, you go to Zagreb, but Zagreb, it's the next year, right? And yes. you don't stay six months to don't play. It's very bad. So... You, fi you find uh, the club or the club find you? Uh, so it was like... Or your agent like... help you? Yes, yes, okay. yes. My okay. agent, is a, it, it was a good, uh, have a good uh, connections with this, uh, with this team. And uh, they asked him, uh, he asked them uh, if you need a goalkeeper. They said yes. And uh, they proposed to me and uh, we find an agreement to go. Uh, and I go there and uh, it was also... Amazing six months when you see it because we managed to stay in the league. We had amazing games. You win against you permanent in the first league, right? Yes, uh, in the last in the last match. Oh, uh, in the last match, you the oh last, my god! Last match, we were it's a, 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 a very a, a very feeling. Uh, it's a very not a difficult feeling. I forgot the word. I'm sorry, but it's very um, adrenaline, adrenaline, right? I don't know. It's You say, oh my God, oh my God, in the final, yeah, we permanent in the first l league. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. It was, we were, it was 15 seconds before the end. We are with, we make the goal. It's one for them, for us. It's one for us. We are coming back to defense. They have a last attack, five seconds left. And, and it's, if I get the goal, we go down. If, We, we stay, it's perfect. And I mean myself, you know, don't get in, don't get in, don't get in, don't get in, please. And somehow, okay, it was a good thing that he shot, but he shot three meters over my goal. Oh my <laughs> God. We, yes, and we managed to stay in the league, man. It was God awesome. stay with you in this game. Yes, it was also, wow, man, it was almost feeling like a title. I swear to you, we stay in the yeah. league. Like... But you play outside or you're playing home? In this game, we play at home. This uh... oh, okay, 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 nice. So tell tell us one thing. Um, you know, you you stayed or at this time it's the second time you stay in Bundesliga. It's the third year. You will more later in your career you back back again to this club, but not now. Not talk about that. It's the feeling. Uh, it's the same feeling. It the the um, the fans of the club. It's the same. You stay in the in your first club uh, in German, um, ba Bellingen, Bellingen. Um, yes. The people, the fans, um, go a lot um, in the, all games. For example, go. Yes. Um, I, I forgot the word. <laughs> no worry, I understand you. I understand okay, you. Thanks. Yes, it's, a, it's like a, it's a, like a culture thing for them. It's uh, they need their uh, the holes are full. The whole the holes are full. Uh, every game, yeah, exactly full. Good. Yeah, yes, yeah, big deal of it. You know, it's uh, we also play like the days after the Christmas uh, and everything. You know, two days before the New Year, because of the fans, it's like uh, it's a big deal. The sport, uh, like the handball, as a sport for them, it's a big deal. They are uh, they really love also the game and uh, they coming in a lot of numbers even during these post covid uh, times they they were oh, making amazing like numbers for the watching the game 
So for example, I think it's quite also culturally. It was it was really good in Ludwigshafen and Ballingen together. In all games you stay in all the club you stay in two clubs in the Bundesliga. In this two in both clubs, you all the fans full of the, the home in all games in the home. I think yes, it was all, always for how I remember it in my in my years and my memories is our hall at home was mostly all the time full. Okay, okay. Because it's very different. It's very different. It's yes, the traditional of handball it's very different. If different in Portugal, in Spain, then in France, that in Germany. The German I I know they have a magazine about handball. It's a uh, all weeks, once a week. They had one magazine about handball. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. True. Oh, 10 minutes. This is very, very fast. <laughs> we have 10 to five, 10 minutes to close the this reunion, but we have five minutes to talk. <laughs> so let's do, let's, let's go on front. Well, you return now uh, the year of the COVID, the two years of the COVID, you go back to Croatia to play again in Zagreb, right? Yes. Okay, Zagreb. Yes. You, you played in Champions League. Yes, it was yes. Uh, not good. This was oh. this was the most maybe one of the most uh, difficult humble years for me as a professional. We didn't have these two years a uh, competitive team for the Champions League. Uh, we were not all competitive, and it was uh, we we didn't we didn't we didn't synchronize as a team. We didn't make good. Uh, even we we tried our best. But honestly, didn't go so well. So only good. Uh, Best thing for me was that you know, and this time I get for the national team, and as a national team, I win my big uh, tournament uh, medal. You know, in this time. Okay, okay. And now in the middle, you have in the one year, uh, one year before, I, of course, you won with your national team the Mediterranean Games, right? 2018. Yes, sure. What is yes. the feeling you win one title for your national team? What is this feeling? Because this the, is, uh, if, this uh, is proud. Uh, sorry, sorry. I feel proud. I feel proud of her. Uh, you know, it's it's something that you win for your country. I think, like for every sport guy, for every patriot, you know, you know, to compete for your own country, to represent your own country is the biggest level of uh, of uh, someone for the players. And to, I think to win the medal, it's even more bigger thing and it was uh, i feel proud of it. it um the mediterranean games is the very important competition for the the national leagues right the national leagues the national teams mediterranean leagues are important uh you have this uh you have the big three in big four included with the olympics you have olympics you have world you have uh europe and you have mediterranean games this is the biggest four biggest medals and you for this and if you know and that time we win 2018 and 2020 we win uh silver in uh euro 2020 so a silver a silver medal amazing amazing yes you have the medal with you in romania or not uh no I don't have it my father don't give me <laughs> he's he's collecting everything in Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> Your medals are all in Croatia. All in Croatia stored and make it by my father's wall so. <laughs> oh okay okay okay. Well, you in 2021 22 you back again in Germany right? Yes, uh, I'm back again for the first league but the at the end they didn't uh, win. <laughs> Too much games that they go down to the second league. I didn't expect it because it was really sure how they were managed to play. But I take the risk to to take this contract, and it was a question, you know, that I will go or I will uh, stay with them playing second league. But I decide, okay, they. I decide to stay with them uh, to play to try to come back. These two years we didn't manage to come back. It was really hard. Second league is in Germany is amazing level. Also, it's also hard games and everything. So it's you need to have also a lot of luck to go up. Not oh. only amazing. So yes, we didn't manage. It was two years like this, similar, but it was a good time in Ludwigshafen and also. And now, for finish the interview, you stay in Bucharest in CSCM Bucharest, right? 
Yes. In the beginning of this interview, we talked to uh, Nuno Farel and uh, Coach Paulo stayed here in the uh, in CNCM in Bucharest in 2040 or 50, some, something like that. Uh, now, talk a little bit about this club for us. Now, at this moment, you talk. <laughs> well, CSMA is a practically new club, you know. It's uh, they are founded, I think, 2008, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and it's uh, you know, but they are more they are more interesting. The keeping the high level of the women team, the women team is uh, one of the best in uh, world clubs. You know they have amazing. Uh, you know, and it's like more we are more under under this, but they are starting to put uh, even more and more every year to the to the men's team, and it's getting uh, financially growing and uh, like a team growing. We have, uh, you know, national team players here. We have from France players. We have foreigners. You know, we are creating a good team. So we will see how the story goes. We are now officially fifth in the league. You know, we try to go to the fourth place to be in the Europe part. And uh, because here Dinamo, Bucharest and Constanza, they, they, are, um, they are really good. They are really competitive and it's hard against them. There is also this Bayamare who is playing uh, who, are, who are in front of us, and it's a competitive league. I was uh, saying in the beginning, they are growing. The everybody is growing, so I think that it's, it's going to be a good story. You know, Kalin Dedu, a player in Dinamo. You know, they stayed know here <laughs> in some episodes ago. He stayed here. We talk talk with me. <laughs> ah yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I mean, I think it's very difficult to play in the house of Dinam because Dinam it's the most big club in the Romania in the handball. It's a it's a hard, hard, and repeat again, hard play in the in the um, the stage of the um, the Dinam because the fans yes. is very loud, loudly, right? Yes, it's uh, they have amazing fans. Uh, Sixty minutes all the time uh, for them there, and it's. Uh, even if you now look the look the look the, just the team, you know they have they're starting to bring the world class players on every position. They have really resources and money for and financially for this. They will just keep growing. They have a uh, Javi Pascual who wins everything with Barcelona multiple times as a coach. You know he knows what he's doing, uh, how he's doing. And yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Yes, and it's really, really hard, you know. He's starting to put Dynamo is growing fast, growing strong, and I think it will be also in a few years really hard to beat in Champions League also. Yeah. Azanin, thank you. It was a pleasure to have you here. The finish you passed very fast, right? Very, yes, very fast. fast. And you're in a good company, passed very fast. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. When you come back, when you back to Portugal, let's play. Let's make a, a dinner or a lunch with André. Why not? Of course. Why not? I'm Why open not? for it's it. Very, right? <laughs> Hasanin, thank you to have you here one more time. It's very. Also, it's a, it was playing. a pleasure. It was a pleasure to talk with you. And now I talk in Portuguese. Mais uma vez obrigado por terem estado aqui. Próximo episódio, vamos ter uma estreia. Não vos posso dizer o que é que é. Não é handball, não é futebol. Não vos posso dizer o que é que é. Mas vamos ter uma estreia no próximo episódio. Vamos ter também o professor Magnus Anderson vai voltar, mas desta vez a falar sobre a sua vida pessoal. E foi este mais um A Conversa Com, na Hora do Desporto. E obrigado. Thank you, Azanir, one more time. Obrigado a você.